introduced me to Victor Johnson. He grew up here in the Dallas. And um, Jackie and I kind of followed Victor through the years and everything. Friends of his mom and his sister and all of that kind of stuff. And then um, a few years ago, we heard that he bought this old house in the Dallas. And it was one of those houses that Jackie and I had always looked at because it looked like such a daunting restoration task. And numerous people had kind of taken it on over the years, and after each person took it on, it became an even more daunting task. It seemed. <laughs> and then Victor bought the place. And so he's going to tell you about his journey restoring the Herbert House and the challenges that he's, he's gone through with that. So, so thanks everyone. So I've never been anything like this. This will be really interesting to see. And uh, there's so many different topics to cover, so I try to just pair it down as much as possible. I'm happy to talk about anything anybody wants to know. First of all, thanks to Eric who he put all the, the slides stuff together. And uh, I just blew in from Thai Valley down there. Um, so anyway, happy to be here. I remember coming up here as a kid, they used to have like old time fiddler come and they do performances. We come up the stairs and listen to fiddler, so yeah, this is fun. So um, 2015, um, my daughter had just graduated from high school and I was kind of in this place where I didn't like my purpose in life, it kind of shifted. And I didn't really have anything going on. I was kind of bored, and I needed a project. And uh, the other thing is, I, I wasn't feeling really, I was living in the Dallas, I'm from the Dallas, um, but like most of my music and, and stuff was online. So like most of my income was online, most of my energy was towards like cyberspace. And I, I wasn't really feeling connected to my hometown. So I was really like looking for something to do, like locally, make some kind of contribution be more plugged into my own town. I was just feeling kind of cut off and, and like I said, kind of bored. I didn't really have a mission. So my whole life I've been looking at this house, thinking, man, that's really cool. Like, somebody should fix that up. It's just basically been deteriorating my whole life. Um, and then as I got closer, it's like, like hey, maybe someday I would take that on. And then, uh, so my daughter graduated in June, and then I went to the Sisters Folk Festival in September where I work on like the production uh, staff. And um, I was driving along 3rd Street and I looked at it and said, you know, that thing never came up for sale. I'm not going to take a run at it. And then for whatever reason, I took a right on Lincoln Street and came back on 4th and saw Dennis Morgan's realtor sign on the place. <laughs> <laughs> Felt it, like, I, like the car kind of forced its way around those two corners. So I called Dennis and I said, Dennis, leave in town, do not sell that house until I get a chance to look at it. Luckily, Dennis was down at the Shakespeare Festival in Ashland, so he was, he was offline, which is great. Um, so, got a tight long story, came back and, and made a deal, saw the place, and uh, made a deal with a very nice owner, a guy named Tom Dixon, who was starting a new family, and he started a new winery in Underwood. He just was kind of past this, uh, but he was very nice to me, very generous. Um, so we made a deal, and then I had like 30 days to get like inspections. And pretty much everyone said, do not do this. Like, like some of the quotes were, put a match to it. Like, run as fast as you can away from this thing. Uh, you'll never get it done. Some of my friends were saying to my other friends. You know? So it's just a few people, you know, my mom, of course, she thinks I can do anything I set my mind to. Uh, a couple friends, you know how relentless and determined that it can be. But for the most part, everybody's like, just don't do it. Just just figure out something else. Which just inspired me more, right? Like if anybody says it can't be done, I'm in. So, uh, and I think the final the final uh, thing was I was listening and uh, Elon Musk was talking. He's the guy that's, that uh, sort of tests the motors and SpaceX and playing around with Twitter now these days. But he was talking about Mars. Um, he was saying that if we deployed all of our nuclear arsenal to the poles of Mars, it would cause a chain reaction and create an oxygen atmosphere, and Mars would be a habitable planet. And he said, I'll never forget, he goes, Mars is just a fixer-upper planet. <laughs> and I, was, I heard that, and I'm like, 
this guy's gonna fix up a whole plenty of planet. If I can't fix up one lousy house, then I just suck. So that was it. I was in. It's like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And what I really wanted, like I said, make some contributions. So this, you know, I wanted to fix up and make the space that we would use. There's this big space in the back. I could envision the courtyard and everything. Everything that's now there, I could see instantly. This vision has never been a problem. Money's a problem. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, so that's kind of like the mindset of, of where I was at with uh, that time life, and I just. I just love that house. I just, I just wanted to be saved, and I wanted to be the guy that, that did it. So, um, so the basics on the property. Um, most of you probably know this house. It's kind of right next to Hope Hall, um, and this was what I understand is like one of the, the first, maybe the first subdivision in Dallas. So Victor Travis bought that block from the city of the Dallas, and then created the lots. And he gave the lot that St. Peter's landmark is on now to the Catholic Church. And then a fellow named William Nix, I think, bought this lot from her, uh, from Trevitt. And he sold it to somebody named Wall. And so the house you're looking at there, the original construction was the wood construction. It was about 1860. And uh, circa 1860. Like it wasn't there in 1859, and Duffet was there in 64. So somewhere 60, 64 is when the original house, which would have been much simpler, wasn't, wasn't like that. Matter of fact, this is a Watkins picture from 1867, and if you can, you can't see it from where you're at, but there's, you can see the the white wooden Catholic church with a really tall steeple on it. And if you had a magnifying glass, you would be able to see. It's the only picture we have of a permanent house, the like the original one. Very simple rectangle, vertical wood siding, amazing, like one by 18 inch boards for siding. Uh, so. Then uh, it passed through a few hands. Henry Herbring bought it about 1884, and and then the brick addition. You can kind of see just a little bit of on the left hand side there. That was about 1890, and my guess is that's when they did like the Victorian kind of face stuff. They probably tuned it up, and you can definitely tell from working on it that's been added to many times. It's been an evolution to what it was. So. Um, so, and then it passed through a lot of hands that got lost. I think there was a sheriff sale, I think, somewhere around the uh, World War II, somebody lost it and was auctioned off. Um, it was a boarding house at one time. I met a woman who said her grandmother owned it and she used to rent it to boarders. Like when they're working on the dam, she'd make them breakfast and dinner and they would stay there and stuff. I think when, when I was a kid, it was kind of like a flop house. Uh, it, we, there was, uh, Chopped up into about six different apartments. There's numbers on the doors, one through six. It was like six electrical meters when I bought the place. Oh. Yeah, so, and by the time we got it in 2015, it, it was bad. Like, the beauty wouldn't turn on the power. Uh, I mean, it was, we had 18 buckets catching rain. There were birds flying around in the house. I mean, it was, it was really rough. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the wood building would have collapsed in that big snow, you know, snow apocalypse we had a few years later, but luckily we got in there and uh, we're able to kind of shore things up. Um, so that's kind of the general basics on the house. Uh, History-wise, on the National Historic Register, it's called the Wall Herbring House. So I think it was Wall that probably built the house. I don't have any proof of that. But from next to Wall, that's kind of when it emerged from the maps and things. So the Wall of Herbring's house, but Herbring is the one that did all the fancy stuff. So I've got a little bio information on her green here. It's not very much light up here, I use my glasses. But, um, um, so Henry Herbring was an immigrant. Uh, came from Germany. At 14, he was like an apprentice for a dry goods business. He finally made it up to the United States. And then he came to the Dallas to work for uh, work with Fred and Carl Gottfried, who had a dry goods store. And I've got the address here. It's 314 East 2nd Street. Which is kind of interesting because the address for the new coffee shop is 314 West 3rd Street. So, well, 314. Um, uh, Herbie became a naturalized citizen in 1879, moved to his own store about 1891, which was on 2nd Street. And I think Eric ID, because the city changed the numbers in this stuff. So I think Eric's figured out which lot um, 
He married uh, a woman named Adolphine uh, Gottfried in 1884. So about the time that he got married, he bought Burberry House. Uh, they had eight kids together. Uh, and Adolphine was born in Bavaria. Her, uh, her dad was a judge, and her mother was a former baroness, Baroness von Marat. Uh, she came to, to, to Oregon or the Dallas in 1883 to join her brothers in the drug business. So Henry, I think, uh, met little sister and married her, <laughs> and then uh, moved and bought the house and, and started their own store. So we've got some pictures. There's some of the, some of the family there on the front porch, and you can see there's uh, like an old wrought iron fence there, which is very cool. This appears later on. I'm assuming it might have got scrapped during the war. And they're looking for metal. And there's a picture of uh, Adolphine and some of the kids in a carriage out in front of Irving House. Now we're to a white pig fence. So and you can see 4th Street isn't paved, it's just dirt. And they've got uh, wooden planks for the sidewalk there. So. One of the amazing things about this house is it seems to have some kind of gravitational pull. Like, things just come back to the house, like these photos. Um, one of the great grandkids found me on Facebook or whatever and said, hey, do you want some old photos of that place? <laughs> yeah. So I've got these really amazing photos, and, uh, and which have been able to do a lot of the repairs. Like, the front porch was pretty much gone. Once we got a hold of these pictures, and there's several of them, we could see we kind of recreated the porch from photographs, and then in the back there was a trellis, which we did the same thing, so we were super lucky. Luckily, Herbergs were wealthy people that had film and cameras and could afford to develop them, so I really would love to see some light pictures from inside, but we've got some pretty good, I think we have most of uh, that outside. Is this the 1890s, this picture? Do you have dates on these photographs? I don't. I would guess that's pre... Well, it must be about the same time, because I think they did that Victorian remodel about the time that they did the brick edition. So it probably is right around 1890. That's just a guess. So there's the, uh, in the back, there was a trellis that went out, and, it, and through the trellis you can see is the old St. Mary's Academy. So this would be looking north towards, um, well, it's like, like, a, like St. Vincent de Paul uh, in the little bakery on 4th Street. So, um, and Herbert was uh, involved quite a bit with like the church and their buildings and stuff like that. He was uh, on the planning commission the design committee for the um, St. Mary's Academy, and he was supposedly brought the plans for the St. Peter's landmark uh, from Germany. I think they got a local architect in Portland to actually know, but there's a kind of a sister church in, in Germany who brought that. Uh, donated the weather vane on top. You're in St. Peter's landmark, the front the left window is a herd ring window, which is right next to Mary, which is a very really special place in that Catholic church. So. Um, very involved with the church and a lot of going on and that kind of thing. So, uh, there's a shot looking south towards, there's a, the, the trellis that we recreated. And my friend Ben Bonham did this. He took the old photographs of the trellis and redesigned it. This is an amazing designer. And the trellis actually came in quite a bit longer and towards the house, but I wanted to keep a nice open space for events and things like that. Um, so Van Bonham redesigned the trellis, and then my friend Kerry Williams built it in his shop and we built it on the site. Um, so uh, yeah, again, just so lucky to have um, pictures and things. And you can see the brick addition from the back a little better there. It's from the because the grade is split from the fourth street side. It looks like a single story with the, with a basement, but from the third grade side, it's like a, a two-story place. Check my outline here from the past. Um, so yeah, so we've gotten some really cool things that have come back to the house and also help. Like, like even though I'm good at jumping in on things and I have like more tenacity than anybody I know. Like, I wouldn't have made it probably two months if it weren't for all the people that helped. Like, miraculously, people just popped up. Like, Andy Harmon said, hey, I see you bought a house. Do you want some help on that thing? You know, and Scott Zegan had been helping with the foundation and stuff like that. Eric's been helping a lot. Um, electrician friends, plumber friends, and stuff like that. It's definitely been a, a community effort. And also, uh, very lucky, like, in the grant department. 
was lucky to get a, a Main Street grant for quite a bit, about $50,000 from Oregon Main Street. And um, uh, City of Urban Renewal, City of the Dallas, I uh, got some help with the uh, engineering for that to do a new foundation. So basically we did everything, new foundation, new roof, new framing, new plumbing, new electrical, insulation. We recreated some of like the fancy finials you can see up on top of the, the brick area there. We recreate some of that. Um, and nothing is cheap in this building. Like we're not going out to Home Depot for stuff. Everything we're finding somewhere, we're fabricating it from scratch. So, um, so we have a lot of amazing help with skills and tradespeople. We had a lot of uh, help with uh, the grants in the city. Don Hurd, the city planner at the time, was super helpful. Um, yeah, I probably would have made it about two months under my own, uh, you know, volition. So I think there's something special about this house. It, it wanted to come back, and that was always my goal. Is it, it's been here for 150 years. I wanted to fix it so it lasts another 150 years. That was kind of the goal, and I wanted to be like my gift to my hometown. I wanted to make a community space, um, and uh, and it's just it's been kind of a miracle. There's so many times when something shouldn't have worked and it totally did. Like. We were building a foundation for the stage, and like, if it was an inch this way or that way, it would have been like right on top of the sewer line, and it wouldn't have worked. Like, like so many times we're just barely threading the needle, or money shows up when when it was gone. Or, so um, it really feels like the house wants to live and wants to be part of the community, and and a lot of the community wants it to happen. So it feels very good to be, feel like something special is going on with this house. So I feel very honored that way. And so, uh, and the motto of Portland Place is just pretty much better every day. Like I, I pretty much worked in this house, like for one period I think I worked for three years without taking a day off. Wow. And like eight to 14 hours, like, like seriously, like there's something wrong with me. Like, definitely, <laughs> definitely crazy. Like no normal person would have done this. No business person, they'd never make their money back, right? And no normal person, because I'm just a guitar player, right? Like, it's mostly watching a lot of YouTube videos or asking friends how to do stuff. And I'll learn how to do it, and I'll do it, and I'll probably redo it because I hated the way it turned out. And just, just persistence. And I always believe that persistence beats resistance. So, um, so that, uh, that's kind of the basics. Here's some of the before and after pictures. And I forgot to, like, check the clock when I started. So if I'm going along, just let me know. This is a picture you can see uh, October 20th. But we closed on it October 15th. So this is just a few days into it. My Uncle Bill has his tractor out there. And there was these big mounds that I thought maybe were hobo graves. But luckily they were just like vegetable gardens. <laughs> I thought maybe people were buried back there or something. Uh, we actually had people living in the bushes at that point. And that was the first thing I did is we cleared out all the bushes. Which I hated to displace the people, but it just we couldn't really coexist. And it was interesting because they're very you know, um, possessive about that property. They didn't like me going in there and fixing things and kind of um, so we had a lot of dealing with, uh, with like homeless people. And like I said, persistence beats resistance. So after a while you, we kind of got a detente going in. I really haven't had much trouble really, but at first it was it was kind of touch and go. But uh, so that was the the, the before picture. And this is kind of what we're looking at now. I made a nice paper courtyard. We've got a, a grant from the Cultural Trust to build a nice stage. Um, we'll have a fountain there where that little green space is in time. Got a nice little hedge. So we've got a lot of shade in there and um, birds are singing and stuff. That's really a lovely place to just hang out and, and be. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with everybody. The goofy little shed there we're keeping. That was like when, the, uh, when I first bought this place, it was a um, uh, preservation plan in place and so you get like a 15 year tax break and then you got to do all the repairs and so I was the third person in on this plan the first two people didn't, didn't really you know they, they sold and moved on so when I got it um, I was talking to the Shippo people the state historic preservation office and, and I'm like well what does this do with this preservation plan they're like yeah you have to do that for your tax break and I'm like but it should be almost done right I'm like <laughs> you guys got to come up here and see this place, which I did. So Joyce Sears came up and she looked at it. She was just shocked the whole time. She's like, we thought this was almost done. 
So they were very flexible because they could see the condition of it, and they only knew a lunatic like me was going to take this on. So, so we did some horse trading, and I got to keep a little shed, which just makes a great little beer and wine station for like weddings and stuff like that. We'll be able to. I think we might turn it into a food stand. So here's a picture of the cafe space. Um, that that wall was completely rotten. You can see all the wood that was in the. It's a brick. Uh, and, and basalt rock with mortar that was totally dissolving and crumbling. So the foundation was pretty much shot. We had the support, you can see the big beam with the supports. And uh, so we supported that and built, you can start to see we built like a giant rebar cage into the wall so we could shoot foundation. We, we pulled that whole wall out of there completely. You can see the little jackhammer up there. I was jackhammering the brick and rock out of the way. Because when I bought it, when you see the plywood kind of at that top right space, the staircase from the front went up and around the building. But in the original pictures, it came down. So we cleared all out so we could kind of recreate kind of the reveal. And this is what it looks right now, which is basically a little cluttery, but um, the whole new foundation, 53 feet of linear foundation, about 13 feet high, rebuilt that whole wall, with the, re put the original window back in, and we put them. Um, uh, concrete floors, we used stamped concrete, so we just kind of made it look as much as we could like the original fur floors. I always say that um, old houses and new code don't play well together. So in theory, we would have had to have like 18 inches of crawl space under the floor, and that just wasn't going to happen because it's pretty much bedrock there. So we put all the plumbing inside, which was outside, and would freeze every winter, all the plumbing. So we got it inside in the slab and, and then stamped it to look like the old stuff. But we got a, we put in a gas fireplace there, and in time we'll have like floor to ceiling bookcases and wallpaper and antique light pictures. So, oh, and so if you follow that right bookcase up to the top, there's a painting up there, and that was uh, the Herbring family gave me that painting, and that is a painting by the former Baroness. So their great great grandmother <coughs> painted that painting. So they decided that it should belong back in the house. And they gave me that painting. Uh, so. Like I said, it has its own little, like things are finding its way back to the house. It's very cool. The portrait, the portrait uh, in the center is Abe Lincoln. So Abe would have been president at the time, so I figured he'd be fitting. And then below that, you can't really make it out, but our man Tom Creaney, some of you are familiar with Tom Creaney, was the Arctic explorer, was on the Shackleton adventure and the Scott ones. Um, his book, The Unsung Hero, is the most unbelievable thing I've ever read. I mean, as far as, if I ever think I have an art at Herbring House, I just look at Tom Cream. <laughs> they were like, rode an open boat like 1,600 miles in the Antarctic Ocean and, and hiked over the top. You know, he was the last guy in with Shackleton and they rescued everybody. So, if I ever feel like I got a rough, Tom Cream's the patron saint of Herbring House. So. Uh, here's one of the downstairs bedroom. Uh, and it was, that was the condition I bought it in. So um, we had to re-plaster, reframe. Luckily, the, those are the original doors, which we were able to take care of. In the bottom left corner, we had an original sink we were able to refinish. We're always trying to repurpose everything and use it in some way. Um, there's more, we had to, uh, I mean, it was just like the place had collapsed. That was, there was like a really amazing old tub under all this debris that I didn't even know was in there. Uh, and it, in the back, you can see we had to do a fire suppression system. So when I bought it, they told me if it was just residential, no sprinklers. If it was commercial, no sprinklers. Once you mix the use, you have to sprinkle everything. So we put this crazy sprinkler system, like the same one they have like at Home Depot or the post office. Uh, and luckily, uh, urban renewal in the city was, they chipped in like $20,000, but almost as much into the sprinklers as the house. Um, so we did put all that plumbing in the ground there and we did all that. There's my friend Aaron. We found a little dump site in that room. And he's holding on a really cool uh, blue glass bottle and there was a little chalice and stuff. It was pretty much the soul. You could only go about a 18 inches deep and then you're just a solid rock. So I don't know if they were shoving stuff under the floor or if that was a little dump site before they built the, the brick addition. I'm not really sure exactly. Um, but anyway, I say that that's Aaron in his happy place. <laughs> and we were very careful, Eric and Jack. We still have every shard that we pulled out of it. 
So that's the after picture in that room that we just saw. So that's the original sink that was on the floor. We've got it on the wall there. And they did the stamp concrete there again. That's going to be an apartment. Uh, so the way it's set up is there'll be um, three apartments, like Airbnb style apartments. And then we'll have a little tea and coffee place. That was the previous picture with Dave Lincoln and all that. I was going to do an ice cream shop. Eight years ago, we needed an ice cream shop. Now we have like four of them. So I guess we're going to pivot on that one. So we'll be doing tea and coffee and souvenirs, probably, and then renting some Airbnb rooms. So that's the downstairs of the brick building. Um, this is the upstairs of the brick building. And that was the condition we got it in. Uh, not terrible shape. The floors were in pretty good shape. Um, the Those are 12 feet there. Yeah. Yeah. There it is now. Yeah. Uh, we've been picking up, we've got some mixed match furniture from the Restore and in Vincent de Paul. And I did score an amazing light fixture. That light fixture there is like one of those Art Nouveau pictures I found off of Facebook uh, Marketplace. Um, and you can see it in the sprinklers and kind of the top right there, we need to paint those. But, yeah, that room turned out really, really well. And it was built you know, pre-electricity, so it's got really big windows, lots of natural light. That's north facing, so my artist friends really love that. So the, the layout, is that layout on the side? That initially had plaster on it? Or? Let me see if I can get back to you. Yeah, on the left side, exactly. Yeah, that's the last. Did you put that back in, or did you use seat rock? I left it there, so yeah. We went, sh in that case, a lot of places we would did plaster, but in that case we did sheetrock over that. We had a sheetrock over the ceiling, so since the guys were there, I just had them do that. And we, I pulled some of that. You can see kind of to the left of the closet, or to the right of the closet, where it was like the new plumbing. So they put a sink. There was a sink right there, and we put a different sink there. And I don't have a picture of that. We've got like a kitchen area, so there's like cabinets and a sink and a refrigerator and a microwave. So people can use it for an extended stay if they want. So. But again, uh, in, the, in the wooden house part, we pretty much replastered everything there. That was one of the great things that Dawn heard from the city of the Dallas is she organized a, a plaster repair workshop. <laughs> uh, so Clatsop Community College has a restoration uh, degree or a certificate. And so she lined up so that they had one of their classes here. So we had all the students. Bed. That was there. She helped plaster the house. Uh, so, we, so we used my house as the old um, Tom Sawyer version, you know, it's like, you give me your pocket, I will let you plaster my house. <laughs> we did that, and then we did a window workshop as well. So again, super lucky that supported people like Dawn at the city and and uh, all kinds of people. Gonna jump the tracks there. Yeah. Okay. So, let me check my notes here, my outline. So yeah, so the idea was to have a, a, a mixed use space. We have a little cafe and, and then the three Airbnbs. Um, I went to a few of the Main Street conferences and I went to this one and uh, we were in this conference room and the different people would come in, like the finance guy would come in and then the shipper people would come in and the engineers would come in and then uh, I'll never forget when the, the finance guys came in. They were very frank about it. They're like, hey, here's the deal. It's like, you want a new old house, that's great, but nobody cares who lived there, nobody cares who died there, nobody cares, nobody, museums don't make any money, you know, and this is the most important thing is how are you going to pay for this project? You've got to be able to pay for the repairs, you've got to pay for the upkeep and going in the future. So, um, so I had a little bit of experience with short term rentals and stuff, so, so we've got the three Airbnbs, we should be enough to keep you know, things work along and kind of um, underwrite the learning curve of the cafe, because that'll be interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, actually I actually have the first one, um, the main apartment that faces 4th Street. Actually, I've had uh, some guests so far, and it's worked out very well. We've got four or five star reviews so far. Um, so this room that you see here should be ready by the end of the month, and then the downstairs one, hopefully sometime in July. I'm headed to Ireland for three weeks on one of our tours, and then I'm hoping the cafe space to be open uh, mid-September, very slowly. Brewed coffee, loose leaf tea, no fancy espresso drinks or, or um, well, anyway. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with everybody. How are we doing time-wise, Eric? 
Good. It's like five minutes, ten minutes. Oh, a half an hour. Oh gosh. All right. Let's do some questions. Anybody have any questions on any aspect of eating? If we have a question on it, yeah, thank you. So you're gonna have this tea room or tea and coffee. Um, the ladies who have body buns were going to do teas on Second Street uh, in that wine shop, which then closed. And okay. they're still looking for a place. Is this a place that might be a possibility to have high tea again in town? Maybe like on occasion, because I really miss yeah. the Anzac tea parlor. I mean, I didn't have a vision. Or like I want to, you know, have the, the vision of the place and control the brand and all that. But as far as you know, maybe once a month or something like that, I can, I'm open to all kinds of things. Yeah. Well, Dr. Uh, uh, concert today. Really? <laughs> I think it's cool that you do the Airbnb because I did it on a very small scale, but you get you get exposure through a lot of places. Yeah, and we're gonna do like I spent a bit of time in New York City and Las Vegas and. They're always really big on kickbacks, right? So, like, if you bring me a guest for like four nights, you're getting a bag of coffee for sure. You know, you're gonna get. We're gonna have a reward it's a referral system. And so. they love the local things. They love the yeah. local things. And then you know, being downtown, they love like walking the free bridge or Shannon's ice cream. There's so much. The downtown is so perfectly laid out. It's like an old pioneer kind of town. Right? It's a perfect grid system. It's flat. It's they've got they've got giant alleyways. Uh, and we need to, you know. Re, you know, repurpose and stuff like that. So, okay. Um, did you find layers or of uh, old wallpaper and paint, and did you um, save those, or are you, are you doing a history of the reconstruction and also for any of the flooring, the first flooring? in the shape that you've been able to use it in some area? Yes, on all accounts. I've been saving all the wallpaper on the different areas. It hasn't been much, but I just want examples. Yeah. So I've been saving that. The paint, not so much. I mean, a lot of the paint was like uh, 1950s pastels and stuff. There was a lot of the original kind of cool. And I think everything was white back in the day. Anyway. We have some interior shots and with white walls and white trim. And, so I think it was monochromatic pretty much. And, in the early days, so, and then, um, sorry, what was the second half of that? Um, the floors. The floors, thank you. Yes, I salvaged all the floors, and they're gorgeous. Um, we used some of the some of the salvaged floors from downstairs on the front porch. We rebuilt the front porch, and um, and I have giant stacks of it at home, very carefully saved for for whatever use we end up doing. And I think at some point we might redo the shed in the backyard, so maybe it ends up there or something. Did you have to do any um, lead paint abatement or asbestos? I, we didn't. And uh, so when I bought it, most of the house was either pretty much gutted or it was decent. So like in the front, we just did some plaster repair. And most of the rest of the house was been completely gutted. So I didn't have to deal with that, luckily. That could be gnarly. And when we did our window um, restoration workshop, they came in from class up and tested for lead on the window sills, and they didn't find any. So we didn't have to do the whole moon suit stuff and everything. So I, I dodged a big bullet there. Another question about the moldings around your windows. Are they original? Those are all original, yeah. <laughs> and I have some, um, like in that room there, that would have been um, like picture frame molding around that. And I have examples of that. It's, it's very delicate. It's um, wood with like fancy plaster. Like there's like leaf patterns and stuff. It's all plaster and it's very fragile. But I met a woman who recreates that stuff. They can take an impression off it. So they only need like six inches or 12 inches of it, and then they can recreate six of it. Wow. I haven't checked in the prices or anything, <laughs> but I, there's still um, anchor points in that room where, the, where it was. So I know exactly where it should go back. I left them in there, so I, I know where to put them when we got to that. Like, there is, there'll be like infinite upgrades. Like, um, I'll spend the rest of my life finding the right light fixtures and getting them trim and, and everything. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of stuff like in the, the cafe space. I have the, the real view board and I have the chair molding and stuff like that. And I have, one of the coolest things I found is there was a, a board that must have been above a stove or something like that. So burned into the wood is a pattern of like one of the metal steaming wood. Wow. So I know what that pattern looks like so if I can try and recreate it somehow. Wow. You know? Yeah. I didn't hear you talk about 
talk about the Habitat Restore, but I used to see you in there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I own is from the Restore or St. Vincent Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I like to buy things at 90% off. <laughs> You know, that's a great question and a funny one. I don't drink coffee at all, so it's like, it'll be funny. Like, I'm the square of square effort. I don't drink it on smoke, I don't drink coffee, I don't drink soda pop. So I'm going to be selling coffee, but not drinking coffee. I like tea, though. I like, I, I like one other tea. And I actually even brought some coffee. And I think, is it good? We had yeah. Eric brewing up some coffee. And I brought a couple bags. I like two bags is all I have, but if somebody wanted to buy a bag of coffee, I can just show you the label, too, because it's, it's, uh, I'm using it for my brand. It's like a whole other history story, but um, Brand Dowell's Trading Company is going to be is like my LLC. So um, I'm going to run with uh, Dowell's Tea and Coffee for the tea shop, but my like umbrella kind of corporate company is uh, Brand Dowell's Trading Company. So we'll be getting a lot of fun out of that. I'm sure. So, so that's what you want in the future. Yeah, I bought a really cool picture of a shoe factory that was over in Dowell's Forge. I guess they called it Randall's at one point, and Rockland, that first picture, they called it Rockland back in the 1818-60s, the so. Um, How about the corset factory? You know, from what I understand, that was just an idea, it never really materialized, but it was like one of many things that was on slave to, to happen. Is that close, Eric? I think so, at least yeah. I've never seen a picture. Yeah. Oh, that might be a good project for you. So like the four or five story building, right here on the, on the bank, on the Oregon side, and in the, in the background you can see the shoe factory. And it's really cool because you can just see the Columbia, and then you see bank, and then the thing, and then it's just a click of cats. There's no rope, there's no train, there's nothing over there, so it's, it's really cool. But it's up there, you guys, uh, I'm looking forward to everybody being able to see it sometimes. I got some really cool pictures, and uh, and a really amazing one at St. Mary's Academy I've never seen before either, with the white wood walls, and, the nuns are walking the students around the block, and there's like laundry hanging and fruit trees in the back and stuff like that. Yeah? There was a tree in the picture that you showed facing uh, south, I guess it was, but it wasn't in the other picture. When you showed like us the shed, the shed groups, there were two side-by-side -side pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm not remembering. That Yeah, yeah, it died. I was really sad about that. Um, so yeah, it actually it collapsed into the street, and the city came and I, mean, I had to I had to pay for it. You know, so. <laughs> That's the funny thing about the deal. This the, the meat, the planner strip. You know, you're responsible for it. It's not yours. You got to pay for everything that happens. To you, so. Yeah, so that came down. That was kind of sad. Any other? That, that In front of the tree, between the tractor and the tree. Yeah, that's actually a, a, a picket fence. It's a wooden picket fence, oh, but it's before we painted it, so it, it's okay. really dark and brown. So. Okay. Bruce? Yeah, well, I thought you might say something about, I was over there once when that uh, retaining wall was going in between your place and, and uh, St. Peter's. It looked like a pretty major part of what was going on. Yeah, it was pretty serious. So there was a brick retaining wall that was collapsing. And then the wall, the exterior wall, was completely rotten. So, so yeah, we had to redo that whole thing. I, I wish I would have a picture of it. So we redid the stairs from going up and around to coming down, the landing and coming down again, which would have been the, the, the historical way they got down there. And yeah, we had to pour um, a, a really long uh, retaining wall. And um, the neighbor can be kind of difficult, so we were very careful not to go on his property at all. <laughs> So, so that was kind of touchy. It all worked out. But, uh, uh, and then we also poured, uh, uh, Scott Ziegenhagen poured a side, uh, sidewalk to the St. Peter's Landmark and we had a staircase so you can access, like in this shed picture to the right, just 
on the other side of that, we have this now staircase. So like, my daughter got married in the landmark and we had a reception in the back. So, which would be great for the landmark because they don't really have much of a, of a, of a lot. The, the, the church pretty much takes up all of that. Um, so they don't have an outside reception room. So it's been a great partnership, Alan and everybody, the landmark. Um, yeah, it's, it's a win-win kind of situation. And I had is like if I was going to burn some time to have this whole this whole scenario where the wooden ch church got changed the steeple, and then when they when they were going to build the landmark, they cut the church in half from the rectory, and they pulled it onto my property, and they built the landmark, and they're still having mass, and then uh, and then um, once they dedicated the, the St. Peter's and started having mass there, and they disassembled the wooden church. And I heard that they floated it down to Stevens in Washington and rebuilt it there and used it as a church, which I, I haven't got a picture of that, but every other, I've got five of the six pictures I want, and at some point we'll put a, a thing in the, in the backyard so people can look up at the landmark and see the whole chain of events from the time. Um, so many things to do. So who is Bo Paul? So the real expert on Bo Paul is here. Carl knows more about Bo Paul than anybody. You want to field that one, or I'm going to wing it. Well, <clears throat> Bolt Hall was uh, uh, that was uh, Maximilian Bolt. Uh, uh, he le he left money to the family, to the church, and uh, uh, the purpose of that was to build a boys' school was for a few years, so that's Bolt Hall. And that's what I heard, it was that St. Mary's weren't co-ed, so they really didn't need a boys' school. And I've talked to people that went to St. Mary's, uh, when they were going to St. Mary's Academy here on this location, and they were playing like volleyball and basketball in Bolt Hall. Wow. Playing a little seedling ball, I guess. Yeah, it was a gymnasium, right? Yeah. And yeah. A, yeah, a, and a parish yeah. hall over the years. Yeah, I had some pictures. It's funny, I have some pictures of some of my relatives dancing in Boat Hall. Oh, like, yeah. I, I was really, I, mean, I would love to see any interior pictures of Boat Hall, but they were very plain, just, uh, yeah, very utilitarian. It wasn't super fancy like I thought it might be, but, um, but yeah. It was Boat Hall built around 
We arrive in the Dalles by ship. Father so-and-so meets us at the dock with the carriage and takes us to the convent. And then they describe this, the convent shape and size is definitely not her right now. So, and it was just like, it was so amazing. And, they, and I wish I would have got a copy of this. In hindsight, I was so dumb. But I had like this whole catastrophe to deal with. You know? but, um, and it was so sweet because they would talk about themselves like in a continuum. It's like, like, well, we arrived here and we did this and we did this. So, like they were speaking like, you know, 150 years ago, as their sisters were, like I said, like a continuum. It was really, really sweet. Um, so yeah, so we pretty much debunked the whole nunnery thing, which I don't even think is a word. I think that's my only way to that. Sounds it's a great story, you know, like a great story that has to be true to be great, but that one's not. We we, we handled that. One. where was the original St. Mary's School? Because the big academy wasn't the original one. And what I read in some of the things, it was on the corner of 4th and, and Lincoln. So you've got basically the rectory was there on this on the, this corner. You had a movie house on the east corner. You had the Snipes house on the southeast corner. So I'm thinking that maybe the original St. Mary's Academy is where those apartments were. It's just a guess. This is like another thing to be tracked down. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of describing oh, along with other people um, the old Fort Dallas Historical Society minutes. Um, Fort Dallas Historical Society was started in 1905, and it was to protect the surgeon's quarters and that. And the original um, impetus was to preserve pioneer stories. So as you were saying that, it's, I seem to remember that there was an episode about where the first school was and who had taught in these moments. Right. So that's, it's available online on the Fort Dallas website. Okay. And we really, sorry, sorry. Yeah. I was saying we really need to get our hands on the, this is the Holy Names Diary. <laughs> There's gotta be so much information in there. And when I, when I bought the place, somebody had given me a hand-drawn map from Bud Sanders, who some of you might remember. And he said the original St. Mary's was next to me where that like little red house so I don't think it's correct, but that's, that's what he said, so who knows. I'll, I'll look through it and see if I can find that yeah. particular thing. Maybe they have it at Marilhurst. Yeah. Where the sisters of the Holy Name are yeah. very far. And Sister Joan, I think, is still there. So yes. yeah. It's just yes. like, I need six of them yes. to track down all the There is a, one building that is an archive in the basement at, at Marilhurst now, in one of the new buildings. My sister lives there now, so oh, I okay. mean, we were had a tour, and they, uh, oh, the history. And when I was in college, um, in part of the remodeling, they took the old, um, in the basement of the big, the long administrative building and classroom building, down in the basement where it had been the kitchen and the cooler, that became the vault for all of their history. So I know they have kept a lot. And I'm yeah. sure every bit of what you heard and saw is probably down there now. Well, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, I'll show you the last, the last slide. There's a picture my sister Sherry took when we were having some kind of event. So it's really starting to take some shape and we'll be able to share with everybody soon. And then it's my, one of my favorite uh, Chinese proverbs. The person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the person doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any last questions before we wrap up? Oh. Um, it is quite an anomaly to have that, a brick structure like that as part of a, a, a wooden. It's thing. pretty and weird. What did you put? Did, did they have a friend who was a brick mason or what? How did this happen? Well, he had eight kids, so I'm sure they just needed more space. And I'm guessing with the floods and the fires and stuff, he wanted maybe a fireproof addition. That's just a hypothesis. I don't really know for sure. Do you live there? 
I did it while I was restoring it. I'm out there now, so it's pretty much ready to start renting. So, um, but yeah, at first I was in a sleeping bag with no heat yeah. and 18 buckets of rain. Because here's the thing, my mortgage was $188, right? And I could get like $1,200 for my place. <laughs> I was basically house camping for a couple of years. And, uh, which was good too, because uh, like I said, it was kind of a surly element when I first got it. So I needed to kind of be around uh, just to kind of keep things cool. So. All right, any last parting thoughts? Yep. Well, I think this area is really rich in history because there were so many artisans that came here, that migrated here, that had a lot of art things. And yet, you know, there's so much construction, and I think it's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, we're really lucky. The stonemasons and the, you know, I mean, everything. That's part of the problem. You know, so I was trying to find a really good plaster guy. It's not easy in 2022. Um, so, yeah, and so. You know, this is getting close. I think maybe two years it'll be up and running and going smoothly. So I'm on, I'm on the eye. I'm a, I got an eye out for other projects. So I'll be a hundred times better on the next one. So any of you have a building you want to donate or like a giant pot of money you'd like to see put together? Yes, good. Yes, good. Well, that wasn't. You were volunteering for money. I, I love. No. <laughs> I love the way you uh, describe the house as a living. It really? Yeah. Thank you for saying that, because it just feels that way. Like, I can tell when the house happens. Like, when the Herpings were there the other day, the, the, the descendants, I can just tell that the house was happy. You know, it's like, it just, there's just a feel of the place. And I don't know, it feels good. I don't feel any bad energy there at all. So the original Hebrews, did they move on, or did they die? There's some in the area. There's a Henry Herbring in Madras, I hear. I haven't um, met. And then some of the Herbings are in, um, and Portland that have been coming out. And then some are just around like Seattle area and California have been sending me pictures. Yeah, but they're all very excited about this. They love they love what's going on. So yeah. thanks Eric and thanks everybody for giving me the time. Lusitania was sunk today by a German torpedo. Several hundred lives were lost among their, uh, among them. Uh, of course, the people think it's an inhuman act on the part of the Germans. 
but they were warned and were going at their own risk. The ship carried ammunition and it was in a war zone. The Germans were justified in sinking such a vessel at sight on course. The USA is thinking of war, then Uncle Sam has to look at his army through a magnifying glass and he thinks twice before speaking. So, so in 1915, Burbank were here like the run up to the to World War One. So I was just thinking like that would be an amazing thing. And pretty much those guys got what they deserved, so they shouldn't have been messing around, wasn't it? Right? It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, I just wanted to say that. So yeah, this is more of the stuff that's been coming to the to the house. And if, and if anyone wants to look at it, there's some old ads and newspaper clippings and some pictures of the Herbert. Anyway, thank you.